Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today we're going to talk about one of the most annoying things in Word and sometimes the most useful things in Word too. And they're both in the same types of features. Autocomplete, auto-format, and auto-correct. Autocomplete. What does autocomplete do? Well, how many times do you need to type a date or a day of the week, for example? So let's say today is Tuesday. Well, if I type T-U-E, which is the normal abbreviation for Tuesday, and stop there, it'll, it'll just leave it there. But if I go ahead and type one more character, up pops what they call an autocomplete dialog box, give, instructing you that you can hit enter, and it'll insert the rest of the word. So if I hit enter there, it'll insert the rest of the word. So Friday, if I stop at Fry, it will just leave it there as a normal abbreviation, but I add that D and press enter and I have the whole word. It does the same thing with months of the year. If you start typing in your favorite month of the year, it will finish it for you if you like, or maybe December is your favorite month of the year because you like Christmas, it'll do the same thing. It'll also do it with dates. So let's say today is January, um, 25th. Oh gosh, it recognized I was typing the date. Do I want to type today's date? Sure, it'll finish filling in today's date and I can merrily go typing on. So autocomplete can be useful in the respect that it helps you to speed up your time if you're aware that it's going on on the screen. Uh, some people type so fast that it doesn't really matter to them. Hitting enter or typing the rest of the word doesn't really matter. Uh, but if you're maybe a one-finger typist, it can be extremely helpful to type in those last few characters and move you along on the page. So that's autocomplete. Let's look at auto format. How many times are you? do you need to tell somebody, let, maybe you're writing down a recipe and you type in one half. Well, that takes up three characters, but if you hit space right afterwards, notice what it does. There is an actual ASCII character that's listed for, as 1 slash 2. It takes up one character space. It'll do the same thing with a quarter. I hit space right after that and 1 fourth. So it'll change the major fractions like 1 half, 1 quarter. Um, I believe 3 quarters will do it as well. It doesn't do it like for eights. That gets a little bit too complex, but it'll, it'll do it for these smaller fractions. Another thing that auto format will do is remember when you're using the normal template, let's say that you've the normal style here, and let's say that you have adjusted the normal style. Let's see what the indent here is. Let's modify this. Um, and the normal indent has it for the on the edge for the first line. But let's say your paragraphs need to be indented for each one. Well, if you want it to be indented, you can just modify the paragraph format here and tell it that you want it to have a special indent of the first line. And by indenting that first line by a half, notice it gives you that in the example. I can click OK here and OK here. One of the features of auto format is that it will let you start typing and give you the normal indent here. And if I if I type all the way and if I just continue typing to the end of the line here and continue it goes to the next line. So that indent feature is one of the auto format features and all of these styles that have various different styles will auto format along with it as you have changed those those styles. Another auto format is, have you ever noticed that sometimes you'll want to put a list together and you'll put a dash here first and then I put something in, in the list here and I hit space afterwards, what happened to that dash? If you didn't see it on the screen real quick, I'll do it again, but that dash here got longer. So what's happening there, and by the way, here's an autocorrect feature. Notice A at the beginning of my list got capitalized. That's another autocomplete, an auto, pardon me, autocorrect feature. So I'm going to go ahead and type, that is what they call an N. N is a Nancy dash. 
And if I type something afterwards, another word, and then hit space, it changes to an M dash. So you can understand what I'm saying, but maybe if I write it here, an M dash versus an N dash. Now, if you don't like it, if you don't like it, you just, I'm going to type my a list here, and I'm going to type in something, and I'm going to hit space. If I don't like it, come right back up here with the with the undo key and it goes right back to the end dash and you can continue on your way. All right, so let's erase this. So what about the next thing? And it's called autocorrect. Autocorrect does some really, really neat things. Unlike auto format and autocomplete, autocorrect actually corrects mistakes in your typing. And I'll show you a really neat feature that you can actually add autocorrect features autocorrect entries to it so that it'll put in words and phrases that you want to put in on the fly. So let's explore that. So let's say you want to put in a copyright symbol. I just What I did was I just typed an open parenthesis, a C, and a closed parenthesis, and it automatically recognized that as a copyright symbol. If I quickly go up here and hit the undo key, you can see that is what I actually typed. And when I redo it, that is what you actually get. It does the same thing with trademark. So if I type in TM, it'll put the superscript TM for trademark uh, in there as well. Yeah. If you live in the Eurozone, for example, if you type in that for the E, you can create the Euro symbol for your monetary system over there. It can be a very, very useful tool when you've got things that are difficult to type. Now, in the past, what I would have had to do without autocorrect is I would have had to go to an ASCII table and type in the ASCII equivalent symbol and then tell Word that this is an ASCII equivalent symbol. Go to that ASCII table and get the, get the symbol for that ASCII equivalent and put it on the screen. Well, what autocorrect has done is it's created a way to do that um, without having to go to that table. Now, how does it do it? I'm going to close this so you can see what I'm getting into here. If you go to File and you go down to Options, down here under Proofing. Now, this is really getting behind, what the, behind Word and going into what they call the Backstage. And it has your autocorrect options right here. And what you can see here is there are several tabs here, and notice what we've already covered. Here's your parameters for auto format, and you can check these out. Fractions here that I highlighted here. The dashes, putting two dashes together will also give you an M dash. Uh, here's your internet and networking paths. Um, remember when you put in www.something.com and you hit space after that, it'll put it in as a hyperlink. <clears throat> and this is where you tell tell it to or not to do that. If you don't like to do that in your papers, you can turn it, turn that feature off right here too. So auto format as you type. Here's the parameters that you can set for auto formats. And it tells the different types of things. And notice there's some overlap. There's the halves and, the, and so forth. Here's the M dashes. A few of the things overlap between auto format and auto, this auto format tab here. Here is math autocorrect. So it's got several things that you can do and you can come here and if you use these math symbols a lot, you can come find what the, the key is to get it to to show on the screen for you rather than having to search the ASCII table to find these symbols. So let's go over here to our autocorrect table where we wanted to come here to the beginning. You know, I showed you the copyright and I showed you the euro symbol here. I showed you trademark already. So those are the one of the top three listed here. But if you also look down the list, you'll see a bunch of misspelled words. And here, with all these different misspelled words, what it does is it attempts to correct those words for you as you type them. Now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and say every time I type in a lowercase rh, I want it replaced with Richard Hansen. And I'm going to add that. Okay, and every time I type in D, D R H, I want to put my title in front of it, Dr. Richard 
Hansen. Okay, I'm going to add those two and see how they work. Okay, and I want to go ahead and play with a couple of the other autocorrect misspellings too to show you what it can accomplish. How many of you know how to spell accommodate? Two C's, two M's. Well, if you do, don't know it, it has actually an auto entry in there for that word. It's two C's, two M's, and you don't have to remember it every single time. What if you get, get to typing too fast and you put about with a T and U um, switched? It'll put it in correctly for you. Or you uh, get distracted and you put two B's in there. Or, um, or you misspell accident, it'll spell it correctly for you. Or you forget the I, after e, I before E except after C thing and can't figure out how to type the word achieve, it'll autocorrect and put the I before E. And if you do it wrong, it'll correct it for you there. And now, what about RH? Oh, man, that helps. And DRH, and it puts in Dr. Richard Hansen. So if, you, if you're typing a paper where you have to type a lot of time, things over and over and over again, like if you're in a blockchain class and you have to type the word blockchain all the time, you might want to put BCH or something as a, as a hotkey. And so that every time it puts in blockchain for you or whatever word that you want to, uh, to type really quick so that you can get through your papers a lot faster. So while these features can be the most annoying, they can definitely be one of the most useful features that Word has to offer. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you again next time. Thanks.